Good evening and welcome to this evening's uh, Flight D6 Mission Stats Briefing. With us uh, to brief on the progress of the Endeavour flight, we have Frank Culbertson, the International Space Station Deputy Program Manager for Operations here at JSC. And joining him, uh, we have Jeff Bantle, the Mission Operations Director, and Sally Davis, the International Space Station Flight Director. We'll have statements from all three of our briefers and then take your questions. Frank. Thank you very much, Ed. And good evening. Um, things continue to go well on this uh, mission. The uh, ISS continues to come to life as they uh, continue to activate systems on board the node. Um, the node and Zarya, of course, are permanently joined and, and things are going very well there. The uh, activities that uh, they conducted yesterday during the spacewalk resulted in the ability to transfer power and data between the two spacecraft and we've been able to test those systems and continue to verify that things are going well. Their node, of course, is getting warmer in preparation for the egress in a, ingress in a couple of days. And uh, another first that uh, I think will become an event that we will all look forward to periodically is, was the reboost of the station today by the shuttle, which was a good demonstration of a technique that, uh, uh, that the Mission Operations Directorate and its team developed in order to raise the altitude of the, uh, of the space station periodically. So everyone continues to work together very well. We're evaluating a couple of things that uh, Jeff will probably mention in more detail. Uh, one of them is um, uh, what we will do about the antenna that did not deploy, antennas that did not deploy uh, on the TORU system on the FGB, the possibility of uh, attempting to deploy them during the EVA. And uh, of course, we're also continuing to look at, at other options uh, further down the line. And uh, we're very proud of the way people are working together. Um, we're very uh, excited about the fact that we now have a, an operating spacecraft and that the node is working well. Um, we're dealing with a couple of minor problems, but uh, we believe that uh, things will work out very well. And of course, what we're looking forward to on the ingress is the uh, first official act on the International Space Station, and that will be turning on the lights. And uh, that will be coming in a couple of days. Jeff. Thanks, Frank. Um, as Frank mentioned, it's been an extremely successful mission so far. And uh, I think we can, we're at the point now where we can actually declare the U.S. element of the International Space Station as a viable spacecraft. It's uh, doing great, and Sally's going to be here. She's going to tell you a few more details about how they've been bringing those systems on board. Today, after the EVA, has been a, a half day off for the crew today, um, so the activities have been a little lighter than normal. Frank mentioned the reboost. We raised to the altitude a little bit over three nautical miles. That was the plan, uh, so it's right where we expected. And, uh, we're now in a very good altitude where we can essentially coast all the way until the service module shows up uh, uh, later this year, um, or later in 1999. Uh, we also, if you remember, on rendezvous day, we had had a little hiccup on GPC-3. Um, we've evaluated that and declared the GPC healthy, no real problems with the GPC. In fact, uh, the condition is a, a fairly um, uh, 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 atypical situation but something that has been seen before and uh, we've evaluated all the data we reloaded the software on that GPC today and froze dry it uh, uh, froze dried in G G2 in the on orbit software load configuration and that's the typical configuration for that uh, that computer uh, crew also started a lot of the equipment preps for tomorrow's EVA to give you a, a real quick background on that EVA the, the major activity in that EVA is setting up all the early com uh, equipment outside. There's two antennas that will be put, one on each side of the node. Um, uh, they had planned on doing some additional handrails, uh, et cetera, but we got pretty much all that done yesterday, so they actually worked almost an hour's worth of tasks yesterday that we had originally planned uh, for this next EVA. Also, one of the MDMs, there'll be a sunshade put on that MDM. Uh, that's on the Zenith side. That's the side that will face the sun. Uh, we're going to release launch locks on the CBM covers. Sally will tell you about what they've been doing with the CBMs to get ready for that. And um, uh, we'll probably look at either moving an item up from, uh, from EVA Day 3, possibly the A-Pass disconnects. The A-Pass uh, uh, was used to drive the uh, uh, docking mechanism on the PMA-1 to FGB. We obviously don't need to drive that anymore. That connection is a permanent connection, and so we can disconnect that power. That's an EVA Day 3 planned event, but since uh, uh, we got more done on the first EVA and we expected, uh, very likely we can move that one up. And then Frank mentioned we're evaluating this other item regarding the Toru antennas. Uh, you probably recall that even before we launched this mission, um, two of the Toru antennas uh, was suspected they did not deploy. That was confirmed with the EVA last night that both are partially deployed. Uh, these are uh, 
a small boom that rotates about 60 degrees and then deploys a mast. Uh, each one is rotated around 15 degrees or a little bit less. We believe the pyros are fired and so we're looking at plans to maybe assist the deployment of that. We'll be reviewing those again tonight with the team. We reviewed them this morning and see where we're at. And if uh, we're ready to do that on EVA Day 2, we'll go ahead and press that way. If not, uh, more than likely, we'd, we'd look at EVA Day 3. But we'll probably know tonight whether uh, we're prepared to do that and have answered all the questions and feel that uh, we got a good procedure together. With that, I'm, I'm really pleased to, uh, to introduce Sally Davis. Uh, she's uh, been working on this mission as an ISS flight director for a couple of years. Um, she's also the lead flight director for the 3A mission, and uh, she's been responsible here for the last eight or ten hours on a lot of the uh, activation activities on the note. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, good evening, everyone. We have been very busy today uh, sending commands to the Unity uh, in preparation for ingress and to check out some of the systems that need to be checked out early on. Uh, in particular, the MDMs that were powered up yesterday have been performing flawlessly, and we have been uh, monitoring those and doing some uh, data dumps of some of the tables inside them to make sure they're all functioning uh, correctly and everything is looking very good so far. Uh, we also, uh, earlier today, began to equalize the pressure between the FGB pressurized adapter and the PMA on the node and that was complete and the pressure in the, those two volumes right now is approximately nine and a half pounds per square inch and holding steady so it looks like we have a good seal at that interface uh, which takes us one step closer to being absolutely certain that we're going to uh, proceed nominally from here on out. We did some controller checkouts uh, on the uh, common mechanisms, the four ports around the node. Uh, the nader and starboard went absolutely nominally. We captured the pedal covers in uh, preparation for removing the launch restraints to, in tomorrow's EVA. We also activated the cabin fan inside Unity. Uh, that's another thing we do to condition the node to get it ready for ingress. Turned on the smoke detectors. All of those activities went absolutely nominally. We continue to manage the heater power, uh, the allocations from the FGB uh, change depending on what attitude we happen to be flying, what activities we're doing, uh, such as reboost, uh, changing throughout the day when we turn heaters on and off. And uh, all of that seems to go very nominally so far. We also, finally, uh, last but not least, we did a command test today we have the capability of sending commands from Houston to Moscow to the FGB to the node. We did a test today. Those commands went perfectly. And so everything today seems to be going fairly nominally. We did have two minor anomalies with the Zenith and port CBMs. And uh, those two in particular, a bolt on each of those ports. Uh, we're in the process of troubleshooting those. We expect uh, in an hour or two to continue the procedure for capturing the pedal covers so we can pull the launch restraints on those ports as well. So as I've probably said too many times, uh, everything is going very well. Uh, we've been, we've, we were very busy. We continue to be very busy and expect over the next couple of days to continue our checkout. And that's all I have. Okay, we'll uh, open it up to questions here as usual. Please give your name and affiliation, Bill. Bill Hart with CBS. I don't understand the CBM issue, so maybe you can explain what, what it is you're working on. Um, the process we do with the CBMs is we do a bolt check on them. Each port has 16 bolts on it. Uh, we drive them out and then drive them back in just to make sure they're all working the way they're supposed to. Uh, on one bolt on the Zenith and one bolt on the port port, on the left port, um, had uh, communications failures. That doesn't mean they didn't drive. It, there was just an error on the bus that from the controller to the bolt. Um, and so we stopped. We're not in a hurry to get this done. We stopped. We want to think about it. We want to see if we want to do anything different, work around it. But the, the bolt test we were doing didn't have anything to do with capturing the pedal covers. So we're going to proceed on with the pedal cover capture in preparation for tomorrow's EVA. 
Pauline Arriaga, Associated Press, I think for Jeff. Um, could you provide a few more details on the installation tomorrow of the two antennas on Unity, how long that will take, um, a little bit more information about how they will be installed, and then how soon will you all be able to tell? Um, well, how soon, I suppose, after the installation, would there be some sort of communications check? Okay. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the installation. I'll let Sally tell you a little bit about uh, when we ingress, what we're going to do to get the early comm activated. Um, we have two antennas uh, that go on uh, each side of the uh, node opposite each other, and they're actually attached to a little plate uh, where the window used to be. They've removed the window, and there's a little plate with a feed-through. We attach the antennas there on each side of the node. Uh, I don't have the timeline in front of me, but I'm guessing about two hours, two and a half hours, something like that for those, uh, for those antennas. And then uh, when we ingress, we'll be going in and atta attaching early comm equipment to that. And I'll let Sally tell you a little bit about that and what the early comm system does. Okay. When we, on flight day eight, when we ingress, uh, one of our major objectives of ingress is to install the early comm system. And it's actually mounted, all the avionics for that are mounted on a rack that's stored in the mid-deck of the orbiter. They will uh, move it from the mid-deck into the node, install it, uh, put power on it. They're actually going to jump or power from the CBMs that are not going to be used over into the early comm system. Uh, they'll turn it on. They'll do some checks from on board. We'll do some checks from the ground. And that's when we'll know if the early comm system is working the way it's supposed to. OK, any other questions here? Mark? Uh, thanks. Mark Carreau from the Houston Chronicle. I, I think I understand that you, you need both on antennas so you can have a satellite link. But if for some reason only one work, does that buy you anything that you want? Or do you really need to have both of them working? You only need one antenna, but if you have two antennas, you'd have almost yeah. continuous coverage. If we have one antenna, we won't have continuous coverage. There'll be less coverage. Um, so either antenna can, can do it. And actually, Sally, remind me, I think the switching mechanism just looks at whichever one has the best signal strength. It switches to that. So. And Bill, for Frank, I guess, uh, just a big picture thing. What's the morale like? I mean, you guys have these two modules linked up now, and you've got the bulk of your work behind you with the EVA. Realizing you still got to get the antennas in, obviously, but it's not over till it's over. But a lot of it's over. So how's how's everybody feeling right now? Everybody's real excited. Uh, a lot of these folks have worked on uh, on this program for a long, long time, and particularly the people who worked on the node and built it. A number of them are here to advise us if we have problems and. Uh, of course, Bill Bastido and his team have been working on this for a couple of years and uh, are very excited to see it coming to life, to see the data flowing, to see things actually working the way they were designed. And so people feel like we now have a station. It's still attached to the shuttle and we still have work to do, but we know when, when the shuttle leaves it, it'll work and uh, it'll be the basis for what comes beyond it. And, and one for you. I mean, the, not how, how is node activation going, but how is Space Station Control Center? How is that whole process uh, going? It's, it's going very well. Uh, we've had a lot of coordination with Moscow, uh, a lot of technical data going back and forth, and that is working absolutely perfect. Uh, a good at interface uh, that we established in phase one, uh, following up on all those lessons, and, and it couldn't be better. As far as the flight control team, uh, the ISS flight control team in, here in Houston, the spirits are very high here. We're not experiencing letdown. We're uh, gearing up and ready to go. Okay, any other questions? We have uh, no questions at the other NASA centers, so we will conclude this briefing. Thank you very much.